Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard their point. Now, hear the counterpoint on Libertarian Counterpoint Podcasts. In our left-hand corner, we have Leon, the word, Brathwaite, uh, last word in liberty. Uh, he is a retired engineer from the state of California. Up in our right-hand corner, we have our screaming eagle of freedom, Tim Everett. He is a pilot in the state of California. <clears throat> and I'll be your host, uh, Jason McPhee. And let's jump into some of the topics. Oh, by the way, shoot, before we jump in, I also wanted to mention to you, uh, if, if you'd like to leave a comment, we have an email address there that you can send them to. If uh, we can, we'll uh, have a bonus section in, uh, to discuss those. in. also, if you have an experience where your business uh, or job has been impacted by COVID or riots, we'd love to hear from you. So you can send comments about that as well. And, you know, if possible, we might even try and interview you on the show. Uh, let's uh, get back into the riots. We seem to have fires everywhere in California, but uh, now they're actually getting some fires that aren't necessarily started by rioters, although they occasionally are. We've been hearing reports in uh, Oregon, I guess, of uh, even Antifa people starting fires. But uh, but essentially, we, we, we still have these riots going on in different places. And uh, we, you know, some of these are, you know, uh, happened a few weeks ago, but we haven't had a chance to get into them. So uh, we had an issue. Uh, you know, one of the uh, big issues was in um, Wisconsin, Kenosha. Uh, we had a, a guy named Jacob Blake who had been shot by the police officers, not killed, but he was shot several times uh, while trying to enter his car. We, we briefly discussed this on a previous show, but we didn't get uh, to discuss Kyle Rittenhouse. Uh, in, uh, he was a, a person who was trying to defend businesses during uh, the, after the protests, I guess, started uh, in relation to this. And, uh, you know, with the police sort of stepping down and their duty to protect a lot of these businesses, it's starting to get pretty violent out there. And in uh, the, this particular um, uh, instance, a 17-year-old kid was out there with a rifle trying to defend a business, and he wound up uh, shooting uh, three of uh, people, you know, in the peaceful protesters, I guess you might say, who were coming after him. And uh, two mostly, of them died. Mostly peaceful protests, yes. 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 So I don't know if you guys wanted to jump in on that. Now uh, I think we've kind of set the stage. <laughs> you know, it 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 it, it smacks of such hypocrisy the way the media cover cover these stories. First of all, this guy was chased down by a couple of these so-called peaceful protesters. He did not fire the first shot. He's also a trained EMT, and he was out there helping people. But yet he was chased. He defended himself uh, at some point in time. He got in an altercation. He did not fire the first shot. He, he defended himself. One person ended up dead, and I think the other was, was severely injured or something like that. But yet the media comes up, first of all, oh, we have this right-wing, uh, right uh, white uh, supremacist trying to kill these mostly peaceful protesters, even though they were chasing them, and they fired the first shot. And that is how the media is covering this thing. What we are having here is all the good people are being portrayed as bad and all the bad people are being portrayed as good. This place is becoming upside down and we better be careful because 1984, as George Orwell once told us, is about to happen right here in the United States and it's happening before our eyes because we are glorifying, we are glorifying the worst of the worst. We are letting them out of prison, they are committing crimes, we are putting them back in prison and they are getting out again and doing the same thing. We have some horrific events that have occurred as a result of this thing. And this thing is going on and on, and nobody seems to be willing to do anything about it. Well, I, uh, yeah, uh, the 17-year-old in, in this instance uh, had a mother, apparently, that dropped him off there. Uh, so she, she doesn't get the Mother of the Year award is all, <laughs> is one thing that, that we... <laughs> I mean, there's no way uh, <clears throat> that I'm going to let one, my 17-year-old son off at, at a riot. I don't care what his good intentions are. Uh, and this has nothing whatsoever to do with his guilt or innocence in this case. Uh, yes. But his mother is definitely guilty of poor motherhood because uh, I would not be, uh, hey, you, you know, Make sure that AR is loaded, and uh, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. I'll come pick you up, right? You know, it's like, what the heck? Anyway. So, 
Yeah. Well, so, you know, um, I mean, Tim, I mean, that's that's a good point about you know the mother, the mother probably could have exercised a little bit of judgment given that he's a seventeen year old son. But the kid yeah. went out there with good intentions. He he was trying to defend a couple of businesses and that kind of stuff. He's also a trained EMT. So I think he yeah. went out there with good intentions. But you're right. The, <laughs> mother, the mother could have had for a seventeen year old kid. The mother could have had better better judgment. I, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And I I know I've mentioned Tom Woods. Uh, his podcast show before, and so he's got a uh, a recent um, interview of the the guy that uh, took the video that is uh, gone viral, the one where you you see Kyle being run down and yeah. and the shots fired and the the people being hit, and uh, so it was an interesting uh, interview. I, th I think it's a 30, uh, 30 or forty minute long interview of of this guy that has yeah. uh, has been down there filming for quite a while and apparently he's he lives nearby as well anyway you know it's interesting to hear what he has to say about it because he was right there having i'm looking at my eyebrows um yeah. and <laughs> and uh, sorry i got distracted that's my add uh and he was uh uh, his his thoughts on it uh, from having been uh, so close to, the, to all that action is is very interesting and uh, you know he's he's in his opinion he was um, he'll be ruled the the actions will be ruled justifiable sure, um, sure. you know in in both uh, both the deaths and the the others the the separate uh, the third person that got shot in the arm the one that was holding the Glock uh, yeah. he got shot in the the, yeah. Well, for other people that don't know what a Glock is, it's, it's a pistol. So a nine mil. Well, I don't know what caliber it was, but it was a pistol. And so uh, one of the guys. Um, oh, and and interesting little tidbits. I, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, my understanding is that all three of the people that he shot were uh, uh, ex. Uh, Felons, uh, yeah. convicted felons, um, and at the least, guy that had at least the, two uh, for sh at least two for sure. There's yeah. there's a, there was an issue on the third one. I'm not sure, but at least two of them were, were um were, were so, had had some criminal 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 past. Yeah, yeah. And, and the one that got shot in the arm, the one holding the pistol, yeah. was uh, the, the, the also, peaceful uh, protester who brought the pistol to the uh, <laughs> <laughs> to the peaceful yeah. protest. Yeah, yeah I mean. <laughs> <laughs> darn, darn tootin'. I mean, you know, you got to go where the action is, right? Yeah, so, yeah, uh, of course, of course. So, <laughs> so uh, Kyle's mother uh, uh, keeps coming back to mind too about going where the action is. But uh, so the um, so the guy was a uh, felon in possession of a firearm illegally, and they, yes. they talk about and they talk about Kyle. Uh, Kyle's legality uh, regarding possession of of the AR. Um, so you know that that's that's to be um, determined in court, I suppose. I mean, maybe they could always get him for that. You know, I mean, you know, we we have so many laws, uh, and he crossed the state line and everything. But uh, my understanding is, uh, you know, you can't purchase a firearm at his age, but you can be in possession of it in the state right. that he was in is, is yes. potentially what's going on. But I'm not saying that's it. I'm just saying that, you know, there, there's, there's a lot of, of things uh, to consider. And it, it, like all these uh, happenings here that are going on and the reasons behind them is that they're, they're all uh, complex and the reasons behind them are complex reasons. And so, you know, we, we can't, you know, just simplify things down into, into little anecdotal stuff that we come up with, but anyway, yeah. we try. True, and that's a good point. But but the, the whole the whole idea, the the whole, the whole the whole thing about this, is why are these people protesting in the first case? In this particular case, I'm talking about. This comes out of the the shooting of Jacob Blake, but I don't know what it is that they are claiming that the police officers did wrong. Okay. Oh they, yeah. There there is video. The police officers told Jacob Blake to get up, put up his hands get on the ground and this is the time he decide that he's going to show how much just how much um how much of a social justice moxie he has and he decides to go back reach into his car for something and what well, is the police well, officer supposed to do 
Wait until and, and, he turns and, around with a gun in his hand? That's what he's supposed to do? Yeah, but, but then, Leon, you haven't even uh, completely set the stage. He had already, I believe, tussled with the police officer. So they had yeah. also shot him with a taser and tried to subdue him with non or less lethal means. Anyway, right, exactly. and, and, you know, he was completely uncompliant. So, uh, you know, I don't know, as you say, I don't know what you can do at that point. They, It's not like they went for the gun first, you know. It's not like they came, you know, uh, thinking they were going to use a gun. They tried a lot of other things before they actually went to the gun. So, but you see, but everybody now, everybody now, all of these Black Lives Matter people and all of uh, all of these damn nonsense, or everybody now is conflating the George Floyd situation with any shooting of any black person in America is now conflating <coughs> with George Floyd, and all of a sudden we have a riot, and all of a sudden we have people burning down businesses and all these sort of things. This is the damn yeah. nonsense that's going on. Yeah. Well, you know, and one of the. One of the other disturbing things in all this is that we're starting to see, uh, you know, more of the peaceful protesters not just bringing bricks and Molotov cocktails now, they're bringing guns now, you know, which exactly. is, you know, yes. what we're starting to see with, uh, you know, the uh, the person who tried to go after, uh, you know, uh, Rittenhouse with the gun. And by the way, there were other shots fired as well in that crowd, so, and that's also in the, the story as well, so sure. it wasn't just... Uh, you know, I think the first shot was not fired by Rittenhouse, is it my understanding. No, so, it was not. So, it was not. So, you know, you've got a 17-year-old kid here who's trying to do the police's job, essentially. I mean, you know, that they, you know, in these, uh, you know, blue state, you know, lefty cities, they kind of advocate, uh, you know, they kind of uh, abdicated their responsibilities for, you know, uh, keeping the peace. And, you know, when you put that on the shoulders of a 17-year-old kid, that's just you know you know pretty pretty criminal but getting to guns to these things you know we also had something in portland that happened about two or three weeks ago as well where a uh <clears throat> protester a peaceful protester i guess the uh you know some of the trump supporters and blue lives matter folks had shown up and um i'm not sure if there were other affiliations there as well but it, you know apparently a few of them were walking down the street and you know, one of these Antifa guys just pulled out a gun and shot him point blank. There was no confrontation or anything. He just shot him. Uh, you know, a few days later, the marshals caught up with that guy and shot him. But, you know, clearly things are spinning out of control. You guys have any thoughts on, you know, the more and more guns showing up at these uh, with these peaceful protesters? Well, inevitably, this is where things are going to go. All right. I mean, we have what we have going on is that these mayors of these blue these blue cities and the city councils of, of the of, of the same cities they have totally abdicated their responsibility <coughs> they will not stand up to the to the people that are looting and rioting these people are not protesters let's be clear about that if you're burning down a business if you're trying to kill people you are not a protester okay you're a rioter you're a looter you're a criminal and the people need to be dealt with but what is going on these mayors and these city councils have totally abdicated their responsibility. So people you know, so what we have going on is like a wild west. People have to defend themselves and some are going to bring guns. So some bad actors is going to bring guns and sooner or later people are going to get shot. And that's exactly what's going on right now. We have the Rittenhouse case. We have this guy with the, um, the Patriot Peer group. He was, also, he, been, um, he was shot and killed. And this, well, as, as a matter of fact, the person who shot him said he's 100% Antifa. So what if you're not standing for law and order, we're not going to have anything else but mob rule on the streets. That's what's going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> what can you say? Yeah. yeah. The, the Portland guy, my understanding is he had been there um, providing security yeah, to the right. uh, pro <laughs> protesters. Yeah. And uh, he had been there for uh, quite a long time. Uh, and, and so I have no answer to this, but my question is how do these people go to, he was not from Portland, he's from outside of Portland somewhere. And so how do these people go to Portland, live there, eat there, sleep, well, during the day, sleep during the day, <laughs> there. where do they sleep? You know, are they renting hotels? Uh, who's providing their shelter and food? And uh, they have no visible means of support that I can tell. Uh, I mean, and yeah, you know, are they paid? 
and if they're paid, who's paying them? And all this, you know, and this, and these these uh, people that are uh, committing arson and uh, violence and um, tearing things down and burning things, destroying property. Uh, if someone's paying them, that person is uh, committing the crime of inciting to riot, a felony. Yes. And and so where you know, <laughs> why is it so hard? And I just I don't have an answer. But why is it so hard to track the money? To literally follow the money to where the source of the money is. And why can't the FBI arrest those people? If it's if it's George Soros or or Mickey Mouse, I mean, who is it? Who's doing this? Because these people, I mean, I I just went to Flagstaff, okay, and it costs a pretty penny to to just you know to go there, eat out every every uh, night, mainly every meal, and and hole up in a in a hotel for a couple of two nights. <laughs> it's, it's like, well, okay, who's doing this? I, I, I think you're providing you, the money. You know, it, it may be that there is a shadowy guy like George Soros, but, you know, part of it's just our government. I mean, we are sending checks out to people. We've told people they can't work in a lot of cases with a, a COVID lockdown. So a lot of people have time on their hands and they are getting, you know, some, you know, some government checks and being told that they don't have to pay rent or at least uh, given rent moratorium. So, I mean, if you've got all this time on your hands and you can't work and you kind of got resources you know, it, it, it can kind of fund a lot of this stuff. And, and to top it off, I mean, a lot of the rules are upside down now because of these COVID lockdowns as well. So, I mean, if you lost your job and, and you're completely upside down, maybe your business has, you know, either been shut down or burned down at this point, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know and I'm, yeah. But, you know, but Jason, but, but, but Tim is asking a valid question here. Even though yeah. I, would, I would accept your point that is people with time on their hand and I accept the point that, that um, people are getting some funding from the government. But the kind of money that we are seeing here in terms of people m moving from state to state, these these Antifa types and others, some of them from going from Portland and Texas and going wherever and those sort of things, moving around so easily. I mean, somebody got to be paying for it. These people got to eat and sleep and they got to do all of these things. They're not sleeping under bridges or anything like that as far as we know. Somebody got to be paying for this stuff. And they have no, just like Tim says, no visible means of support somebody's paying for this and i have heard before uh, tim raised the point of george soros i've heard that there are george soros groups funding some of this thing i don't know if this is true and i'm not accusing anybody of anything because i don't know but i've heard this before okay yeah. so there must be somebody channeling money to these people they cannot exist they could not exist doing what they're doing without having some way to support themselves while they're doing all this damn nonsense out there yeah. So I think it's a valid point that we should be tracing this money for, you know, um, during the, um, during the, um, the Nixon, um, the Watergate scandal, one of the big things that, um, that Deep, Deep, Deep Throat said was follow the money. I think that's what we need to do, just like Tim suggested, follow the money. And we might end up someplace that maybe we might be uncomfortable about it, but we need to find this out. Yeah. No, certainly yeah, there is uh, a path. If not if not us the fbi i would yeah. think would be the ones yes. uh, we're, we're talking we're talking people crossing state lines so boom right away their fbi's got uh, jurisdiction over that so uh absolutely you know lo and the local police too i i, I <laughs> just don't get it i just well, don't understand how this can continue uh unabated and and nobody uh, being arrested that yeah, it's got deep enough pockets to fund all these people doing course, all this damage. And well, and yeah. now the, the the estimate is two billion dollars yeah. just in uh in I I, I can't remember this the city. I think it's uh in Minneapolis. In Minneapolis uh, I think it's Minneapolis. I think it's Minneapolis you're talking about him. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a, a two billion dollar damage estimate. I mean that you know that that's crazy. That is insanity, and uh, it you know, just has to be stopped. 
Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was just in Minneapolis or not, but because uh, I saw a little something on that story too. But uh, but even the yeah. two billion dollars doesn't account for everything. That's just insurance estimates, no. and insurance estimates are capped yes. at certain amounts. So I mean, there's yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah, yeah. beyond that. You know, it, you know, maybe they have to haul away junk from their you know site and you know clean up. Mm-hmm. But you know, I, I saw this one uh, thing uh, in Minneapolis where a guy's business was completely leveled and just all he had left was rubble. And then the, the city government came along and told them that uh, uh, they, they put up a fence around it and we're going to charge him for putting up the fence around it. Of course, they didn't Off send the anybody fence, to yeah. stop the, the people from burning it down. But then, oh, this is not safe, so we better put up a fence. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we're going to charge you for it, the, the person who we abandoned, you know, when all this was going on. But uh, speaking of which, uh, one of the things I didn't want to uh, let get past before we run out of time was... Uh, in Sacramento, uh, you know, where, uh, you know, some of us, uh, I think we all have a little bit of a connection to Sacramento, but, uh, you know, they tried to start, Antifa tried to start riots here about uh, two or three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, it amazes me that, you know, you guys are talking about whether or not somebody's funding them and how we can even track it. There's a lot of people on the left who even doubt if Antifa is a real thing, you know, and if they exist. Yeah. And it's just yeah. shocking, you know, you see this stuff happening, and it's almost like, are people... You know, is there complete gaslighting going on here? And so one of the things I had found, uh, and it really you know, kind of enraged me, uh, was that, uh, you know, Antifa has a website, uh, Sacramento Antifa, on their Facebook page. And I'm going to try and post that right now or share that to the screen so you guys can see. But I wanted to show you guys what one of the pictures looks like uh, that they use to try to organize their, uh, to, to, to try and organize their, their peaceful protest here. And so this is, uh, hey, I'm not sure if we, can you guys see the poster right now? I'm seeing it, I'm seeing it, yes. Yeah. Okay, yep. yes, and, and this yep. is just one of several nights where they sent these uh, posters out trying to organize here in Sacramento. And I mean, this is clearly anything but peaceful that they're asking for. They're saying, uh, no peace police, no good cops, don't snitch. You know, and it's tied to the Kenosha, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, peaceful protests. <laughs> I mean, yeah. clearly, this is anything but peaceful. And this is, if you can see here, uh, this is Antifa's uh, Facebook page. So Sacramento Antifa, they have their own Facebook page. And I imagine they have these wow. all over town. So if, if you hear that there's going to be a rally in your town, be aware that, you know, th- this is the type of material that these people are organizing with. And it is absolutely uh, setting out an image of anything but, uh, you know, anything but <clears throat> a peaceful yeah. protest. Yeah, but, but it, they had a, a picture. They didn't have a picture of a bunch of people looking up at a someone talking about the 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 methods uh, and, and possibilities that there uh, can be to minimize this problem of, of police uh, overuse of force. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a picture of a burning building. So uh, th- there's no, there's no uh, um, desire for solutions. There's just a desire for destruction. You know, yeah. Destructions over solutions. Yes, is what that says. So and yeah. and, they, and, and they ought to do damage. It. Yes, they want to damage our way of life. That's what they ought to do. They want to damage our way of life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they can replace it with uh, their dystopian fantasy, I guess, or utopian yeah. fantasy. Uh, to them. No, they want to. They, they want to replace it with <laughs> with with the chop and the chairs and the things that they had in Seattle and, and Portland. That's what they want to replace it with. And these well, are the, uh, the yes, and this is the replacement that, long, that is going to take us to utopia. And, and remember, long Seattle existing communities, yeah. those communities <laughs> yeah. that still exist because they're so yeah. solidly. They're as perennial as the grass of those wonderful places <laughs> that no longer exist. The- yeah. and, and remember, Seattle was supposed to be the summer of love until the moment when that turned yeah. into a bunch of dead people yeah, <laughs> shooting each other. Yeah. So, it's, uh, uh, but uh, that said, we are coming up on near the end of the show, and that's time for our knucklehead okay. noise yeah. patrol. <laughs> So uh, in this segment, we always try and find something that's just kind of outlandish that somebody has said out there, usually related to our, 
our politics going on. And, and uh, uh, this time the winner is Donald Trump. Uh, Donald Trump was in an interview. <laughs> Uh, he did a series of interviews, apparently, near the beginning of the year with Bob Woodward. You know, Bob Woodward of Woodward and Bernstein, the, the, the yes. reporters who brought down a president. <laughs> so, somehow she thought it was a great idea to start talking, uh, you, know, uh, you know, covertly to, to Bob, I guess, on the phone. And, and while he, they were sort of playing down the idea that COVID might not be that serious in the media, you know, and that, you know, we're going to get through this in a relatively short period of time. Uh, you know, he's telling Bob, he says, to be honest with you, I always wanted to play it down. I still want to play it down uh, because I don't want to create a panic. And yet he's telling Bob that, oh, my God, the kids are getting it. And it's going to be terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> but, but it's sort of like. You know, there's there's a whole room of reporters out there, and and you're confidentially telling another reporter <laughs> that you're not telling us. <laughs> I mean, it's just hard to imagine what's going on. You know, uh, in his head. Do you guys have any thoughts on? That? <laughs> I mean, it's a we bunch of interesting times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, what was that, Leon? No, I think it's a bunch of hypocrisy on all sides here. Okay, really and truly. Uh, the, the all the politicians are telling people to go on with their lives is no big deal. Bill de Blasio, Nancy Pelosi was in Na, Nancy Bill Bellagio is telling people to go on with their lives. Nancy Pelosi was in was in Chinatown here right here in, in California telling telling oh they wish everybody would come to Chinatown and she's hugging everybody and that kind of stuff. All of this was going on. So Trump was joining the, the fray and he said, okay. Yes, yeah, deadly, but I don't want to panic everybody, which is a kind of hypocrisy yeah. when you think about it. If he knew it was deadly, why why he telling why he giving a different message? But Nancy, Bull, nobody was thinking thinking it was a big deal either. Okay, nobody thought it was a big deal. But now we're looking back in hindsight now, and now we can see so clearly. Oh, it was a big deal. Oh, our leaders didn't do this and they didn't do that. Oh, they should have done this and they should have done that. Now everybody now could tell us what should have been done, but they could not have told us that when it was necessary, which was like six months ago and that kind of stuff. This is just a butter damn hypocrisy on all sides. Trump, Nancy Pelosi, Bill de Bellagio, and the whole bunch of them. A bunch of hypocrites. Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm here for the popcorn and, uh, and the entertainment, which uh, we have uh, copious amounts of today. There's lots of entertainment from our leaders. Oh, no doubt about that. Dear no about that. Yeah. Well, you know, and then that's uh, the crazy thing. These are the times we are living in, and these are our leaders. <laughs> and it gets more bizarre by the day. <laughs> and, and that's right. It's, it's, it's more bizarre by the day. And now, and now we, are, we are looking, we are on the verge. I mean, I don't know if you're going to believe the polls. I don't. But we are on the verge of electing a, a half senile man to take the reins of power in, in the United States of America. God help us. God help us. Uh, and that'll have to be the final word today of Liberty Leah. And then, so uh, uh, we're just about out of time. And so uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining us. And uh, like I said, if you have any comments or anything else you want to share, send it to the email address we showed earlier. Uh, but uh, we'd look forward to seeing you at the next one. You can catch our other shows at, on Facebook, uh, Libertarian Counterpoint, or uh, I think what, some of these will be on uh, uh, public access channel 17 for Sacramento as well. So uh, you can catch them there or at the uh, libertariancounterpoint.com. Thanks again for joining us and hope to see you at the next one.